In 2013, Naughty Dog released one of the greatest games ever made, The Last of Us. In 2020, they released an even better game, The Last of Us Part 2, along with the smashing success of the Uncharted and Crash Bandicoot series, Naughty Dog have been labelled the Jackie Robinson of video games. Every swing a hit, every game a home run, everything they touch, gold. This year they swung for a new fence, television, and not only did they hit it out of the park, they pulled off one of the most stupendous feats in television history. They made an adaptation that is not only better than the original, it's a lot better. It's so much better that people will forget it was ever on PlayStation. Here's five reasons why HBO's The Last of Us is better than the game. Remember Bill and Frank? Not likely. A mere footnote. Bill, the conspiracy nut whose love of privacy is rivaled only in the real world by Harry and Meghan's. Frank, frankly, my dear, the game didn't give a damn. Consigned to a letter that most gamers didn't bother to read. The TV show corrects this grave error and finally shines a light on their relationship for the whole of episode three. Bill, still a mad prepper, but now madly in love with the first man to fill the gaping hole in his garden. Prepper man, piano man, kisses a man. What people do in their own bedrooms is up to them. And now it's up to HBO to show the Bill and Frank action in all its glory. Look away now, homophobes. One can only wonder what the producers have planned for season two, because this scene will be difficult to top or bottom. Throughout episode three, Bill and Frank grow old together, like Romeo and Juliet. There are now numerous calls for Naughty Dog to remake The Last of Us, but this time, focus on the only story that truly matters. The TV show doesn't just make side characters the main course, it changes course entirely for the better. Who is this, you ask? Don't ask, because she is not in the game. She's a brand new character, and she's here to show the men there's a new queen sheriff in town. Kathleen is the boss, and when she learns Joel killed one of her troops, she sends Chuck Gandalf out for revenge. What's up, Doc? You are. Kathleen smartly executes the only doctor in the camp. After stumbling upon concept art for a Superman reboot, she becomes emotional and delivers a beautiful soliloquy about justice. He told me to forgive. Where is the justice in that? What is the point? There is no forgiveness for toxic white males like Joel. In an ironic twist of fate, she meets her end at the hands of the most toxic white male of all. And... Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. The Last of Us Left Behind, no longer Left Behind, as a Left Behind expansion pack, it expands to fill up the entirety of Episode 7. What's it about? Ellie and Riley go shopping. All the shops are shut, all the customers dead, but there's still enough power to light up the Rockefeller Christmas tree and all of Manhattan. They play Mortal Kombat, go to Panda Express, ride on the horses, and... In the original, Ellie's sexuality unknown. In the TV show... <laughs> Before true love blossoms, they are attacked by something that blossoms even faster. Go, go, go! The course of true love never does run smooth. In The Last of Us, it runs smoothly straight into the infected. Ellie is forever changed by Riley's death. But that is nothing compared to the change in viewers' hearts. Thanks to Bill and Frank and Ellie and Riley, the zombie apocalypse is a much safer space for gay preppers and left-behind lesbians. Joel Miller is the father everyone wishes they had. He's slow to warm up, but he's funny, kind, and heroic. Joel does what every dad would do in a world ravaged by toxic mushrooms, whatever it takes to protect his new daughter Ellie from becoming Princess Toadstool. His morals, his ethics, greyer than his hair. Black and white, right and wrong, surviving another day is all that matters in a world as perilous as The Last of Us. 
In the TV show, Joel is not Joel Miller, he's Joel Killer, Joel Ripper, Joel Rambo, Fireflies Must Die. The rampage through the hospital to save Ellie from dissection is no longer blurred. It's crystal clear, he's a murderous psychopath. The background song during the massacre could have been played by the Titanic Orchestra on the way down. If the music did not do the trick, the cold-blooded execution of Marlene is enough to tip people off. Joel is not the hero of the story, he's the villain, and he needs to be dealt with by a modern and progressive protagonist. The Last of Us Part 2 was met with critical acclaim and mass confusion. Why are gamers suddenly playing as the woman who teed off on Joel's forehead? And why does she have the body of a Leopard 2 tank? Abby murdered their video game dad, sent one woman army Ellie on the revenge warpath, and became the only playable character for most of the second half of the game. The problem? The beautiful and inspirational revenge, but without the revenge story, was lost on the unenlightened. They still yearned for Joel, because the first game did not turn him to the dark side. He wasn't Darth Joel, he was Dad Joel. Joel who did bad things, but with a good heart. HBO loses the ambiguity and makes sure no one will ever question Abby ever again. Now Abby's trip to the golf course is 100% justified. Joel is evil personified and justice is on its way. Justice in the form of 21st century heroes. Strong and independent Abby and transgender Lev. The heroes we deserve, the heroes we need to make the apocalypse a fair and equitable place for everyone. It's possible to count on one hand how many times the infected appear in the TV show, unless you're Ellie. In the game, players are constantly overrun by runners, stalkers, clickers, and bloaters. In the TV show, viewers are overrun by dialogue. Lots of it. The Last of Us feels like the leftovers, but instead of people, it's all the infected who have disappeared. One may wonder if HBO took inspiration from women talking, for there is more talking in The Last of Us than there are genders in humans. HBO rightly understood that what made the game so special, so successful, was not the guns, the bombs, the ladders, but the conversation. Boys. The first episode opens with a talk show. The last episode ends with Joel and Ellie talking on a mountain. It would be no surprise if season two is called The Last of Us. Joel and Ellie talking until Abby kills him. In The Last of Us, Ellie was an exception. In a world that had beaten Joel and everyone down, she radiated hope and optimism for the future. Her childlike innocence and charm is what brought Joel back from the brink. He finally found new purpose and love in his life. In the TV show, Ellie has evolved. Instead of the slow progression from kind-hearted teen Ellie to vengeful three-fingered Ellie, the change is immediate. TV Ellie is born strong, independent, and completely sociopathic. When Tess dies... Hey look, um... About Tess... I, I don't even know what... Here's how this thing's gonna play out. You don't bring up Tess. Ever. Look, I've been thinking about... I want your sorry. I wasn't gonna say I'm sorry. I was gonna say that I've been thinking about what happened. Nobody made you or Tess take me. Nobody made you go along with this plan. You needed a truck battery or whatever, and you made a choice. So don't blame me for something that isn't my fault. When Joel almost dies... Can you get on? Come on. Joel! Give him the horse! When Ellie tells a joke... Do you know what's not right? Left? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's awesome. Joel? Hmm. Did you know diarrhea is hereditary? What? Yeah. It runs in your genes.
the television show strips Ellie of her endearing vulnerability and connects her with viewers via something much more powerful and potent. Bulletproof femininity. Never again will this be called a Joel and Ellie story. From now on, it's Ellie and Joel, or soon enough, Ellie and Abby and Lev. HBO's The Last of Us is a crowning achievement in the history of video game adaptations. Before, gamers bowed their heads in shame. Super Mario Bros., Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed, the list of humiliating adaptations was an endless pit. The Last of Us has stopped the rot and sprouted a bright new future. Not only can video game movies and TV shows be just as good, they can be better, a lot better. HBO, Neil Druckmann, and everyone involved in the show, thank you for making one of the greatest games of all time, and now one of the greatest TV shows. We can only imagine what season two, The Last of Us Part Two, has to offer. What, is that it? You asked for it. Oh, you gotta be kidding me.